Hello and welcome to this video that is going to demonstrate a few examples of graphing inverses using transformations. When I say inverses, I don't necessarily mean the function that undoes another function per se. Uh, I mean functions that are uh, inverse in that they follow this parent function. Uh, they're called that because when you do one over a given number, you wind up getting the multiplicative inverse of that number. And you'll see that here. So the word inverse is used somewhat flexibly uh, in math. Um, and knowing its precise meaning at the precise time is a challenge. But uh, if you push yourself to that, you'll be in good shape. All right, so this is um, the key thing you need to realize here is we're dealing with transformation. So I'll talk a lot about A, B, H, and K as I have in class. If you're looking at this and you're not one of my students, you might be a little lost on the A, B, H, and K part, but trust me, they are being used in some way in your class by your teacher, maybe just by a different name. All right, so first off, we need to build a parent function for this graph. And this graph is the most basic uh, inverse function we can deal with. If you notice in a moment, I'll go to more complex inverse functions, which you see we have a division, and there's a variable in the denominator of degree 1. Um, similar here and similar here. But again, they are all based off of the 1 over x phenomenon, and they are then, in fact, just transformed around. So it is important that you realize we're starting with y equals 1 over x. So um, some numbers that we like to plug in, and I'll do that to start, are 1, 0, negative 1. They seem to be uh, somewhat um, popular for us. Um, and I just want to be able to sort of space those out in a way, because I'm going to add some more numbers in here in a second. So if you notice here, if we take 1 and plug it in, 1 over 1 is simply going to give us 1. I graph 1, 1. And if you notice here, something weird happens. If I plug in my 0 here, I get 1 over 0, which is undefined. So again, that's something I can't graph because it's undefined. So when I take negative 1 and plug it here, I get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So I can graph that. So if you notice, it's not much of a uh, graph to go on to start. So I'm going to add a couple of points here, OK? And I'll add 2 and negative 2. So when I take my 2 and plug it here, I get 1 over 2 is going to be a half. So I get 2 over and a half up. And then when I plug in my negative 2 here, I get 1 over negative 2, which is going to give me negative a half, which will go negative 2, negative half. Now, that doesn't seem like the mystery's uh, all that more solved. It's a little bit of a help. Um, you know, I still have that sense of 0 being undefined means I'm not going to get anything on the y-axis. And I notice something, too, is it just seems like I'm flipping the number over by putting it in this function, which, if you think about it, like I said, that function is the inverse function because it creates the multiplicative inverse. So I'll pick a couple of fractions that are easy because they'll just wind up getting flipped over. So I'll pick a half and negative half. So if you notice, if I put a half in here, 1 divided by half, if you just do your keep, change, flip, division of fraction rules, you're going to wind up with 2. So I got 1 half over and 2 up. And then same for negative 1 half. It's not a shock. It's the same thing with a uh, different sign. So I'm going to get negative 2. So that's going to give me negative half and negative 2 down. So they're the parent points, and you have to kind of commit this drawing to memory, okay, as we need to for all of the parent graphs that we're going to create transformations for. So again, once you know the parent functions, it's just a matter of being able to identify the parameters of A, B, H, and K. So the standard form here, if you notice, <coughs> excuse me, so... Uh, where did I leave off here? I had a pause in the video. Um, so here, again, you're looking at the general forms that have A, B, H, and K involved in them. I have two general forms here written 
Uh, they're really the same. I'll explain that in a second. So again, everything you've learned about A, B, H, and K uh, are true. A and K affect the uh, output of the parent function. B and H affect the input of the parent function. Uh, A and B are multipliers, and you think of them multiplicatively. H and K are additive in nature, could be add a negative, so there would be add or subtract. Okay, when you do the transformations, follow the order of operations, apply A and B first, H and K second. Okay, because A and B are multiplicative, they should go before H and K, which are additive. Okay, so um, don't forget, A affects the output, and so does K. So you outright do what they say. B and H affect the input, okay? And you do the inverse of what they say. That should all be covered in class. You should have some experience here um, if you uh, are looking at this video. This is not a starter video here. All right, so why do we have the two uh, general forms here? Well, if you think about it, we're really multiplying by fractions in this form if you put the A over 1, and I will, okay? So if you're just multiplying fractions, the rule from third grade was multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. So A times 1 would be A, and 1 times B times the quantity X minus H is B times the quantity X minus H. So you have to be able to recognize these things, and the, the harder thing about these I'll perfectly admit is that sometimes you see A on the outside of the parentheses, which help you identify it because you've been learning to think A is the um, parameter that's happening on the outside of the parent function. But it's also real simple to say if the numerator is not 1, that could be A as well. Actually, if the numerator is 1, that's A also. So you might get it in either form. Both these forms are the same. They really don't look it, but they are. Okay, so... Um, We'll try and take a look here. I'll even maybe write some notes in here uh, and fill out these ABHK charts because to do transformations, you're going to need to be able to recognize that. Okay? So what do we have here in example one? We've got that A is 1 because it is the numerator. Okay? You also could sit here and say it's 1 times that, the number on the outside. Same deal. So A is 1. Okay? And on bottom, we see that I'm multiplying this quantity by 1, which isn't written. So there's no multiplicative transformations done there. H, remember, is affecting the input. you got to think the inverse. I see plus 4. It's really minus 4. And for K, it's affecting the output. It's A-OK. -okay. I see minus 7. It's really minus 7. Okay, moving on. We see that in example 2, making this ABHK chart, A is 4 because it's multiplying the parent function. Um, a little more obvious here, because it's on the outside of the parentheses, right? Okay. Uh, B, down here, if you notice, I'm multiplying by 1. I'm also subtracting 0, so that should give you a sense of B is 1, H is 0. And on the outside here, I'm adding 7. So K is plus 7. Again, A OK. If you're dealing with A or K, it really is what it says. All right. Now, if you notice here, this gets a little trickier. Okay. Uh, my numerator here is 7, so that's A. I could rewrite this and factor it out and say it's 7 times 1 over 2 times x minus 5. And it's really the same thing. And then you would see that the 7 is much like the 4. It's on the outside, so it's affecting the output by multiplication. And that's A's job. Either form is good. You just have to be able to recognize it. Okay, now we see here in the denominator, B is the multiplier um, of the input argument, so it's 2. You would use a half because it's the inverse effect when you're doing multiplication by the input. And then here, H, we're looking here, I see minus 5, I got to think inverse. It's really plus 5, which moves the function to the right. And k is, in fact, plus 0, which is 0. So being able to read those charts is really important. Okay, I'm going to put those charts in motion now with two examples. Okay, so please graph y equals 3 times the quantity 1 over x minus 3 
plus 1. So I see here that a is 1, excuse me, a is 3, okay? And if I multiplied it out up here, you could see the 3 up there, but that's just for the other general form, okay? b is the multiplier um, that's affecting the input, which is 1, so I really don't care about it. Uh, h is the additive effect or additive parameter with the input, but use the inverse because you're dealing with the input. I see minus 3, it's really plus 3, making me go right 3. And then I've got k, which is plus 1, which is making me go up 1. It says plus 1, I do plus 1. A OK. Now, I've got to get my parent graph uh, situated, which we said is 1, 1, 2, 1 half, half 2, and then flip that over through the origin because it's an odd function. Uh, that you might not know off the top of your head, but we looked at that in class. So that's the parent function. So now I will apply my parameter of A, which is doing a multiplication of all the outputs. So whatever the output is, I just have to triple it. So I'll start here. Okay. Actually, let me start on the right side just because it's all positive. I would tend to want to start here and work to here because it makes me sense I'm reading from left to right. Uh, and that helps me organize it. But this one's a little tricky, so I'll just start in the positive, positive quadrant, quadrant one. Okay. So the output here is two. It becomes six when I multiply it. So I gotta go up four and off my graph here. I'm gonna use a box because it's not the final answer. So now I got half comma six. I'll label it because it's off the graph. The output here for one one is one. So when I triple it, I will then get three little box because it's not the final answer. Now, then I'm going to have to do this point whose output is a half. Remember, it's two comma half. So I'm multiplying the half by three and getting three halves, which is also one and a half, which is here. Now, similarly, I'm going to do these three points, okay? The output here is negative a half. So when I multiply that by three, I get negative 3 halves, which takes me here. The output here is negative 1, right? Sorry, a little magic pen mishap there. When I multiply that by 3, I'm going to get negative 3. And then when I multiply this output, which is negative 2, by 3, I'm going to get negative 6. Again, off the chart, 4, 5, 6 down here. I'm going to get negative half, comma, negative 6. Now, what I need to be able to do is be able to apply this transformation in blue, which again, I'll do in one step, and I'm going to go 3 right and 1 up. Okay? So I have to be able to count on the grids pretty well, and then I'm going to get what? 1, 2, 3, and 1 up. Final answer, so I use a dot. And then I'm going to go here and go 1, 2, 3, and 1 up. Final answer, so I'm going to use a blue dot. And then here, okay, I'm on the half, so you've got to be careful here. So I'm going to go where? I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and 1 up. And if I was down at negative 6, I'm actually going to be at negative 5 for the y value. And it looks like... I'm actually going to be at uh, two and a half comma negative five. Okay. So two and a half negative five. Okay. Still got to translate my other points. So here I'm going to go my uh, half comma six. I'm going to go. Four 3 to my right, which is 3 and a half, and up 1, right? So that's going to give me 3 and a half comma 7. A little hard when it's off the chart, but it does make you think. And then this purple one that's on the chart should be 2 and a half. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 to the right and up 1, which is going to put me back on the chart, which is nice. Okay? 
And then this last one, I'm going to go 3 to the right, which is going to give me 1, 2, 3, up 1. Puts me at 5, 2 and a half, I believe, if I've done that right. So it's 5, 2.5. Okay, now, the one thing that you'll also see here is something that shouldn't be that much of a shock, okay? And that is that what you've learned about domains, you can see that 3 is excluded from the domain. So, the vertical asymptote from 1 over x, where x can't be 0, also got shifted 3 to the right. You notice there's a discontinuity in the graph. Okay. Uh, the next piece of this is where the horizontal asymptote, which you really haven't learned much about just yet, has also been moved up one. So it was here, right? So if you look at the parent function, so if it got translated up one, excuse me, I touched the graph there, it should be here. Making your final answer if you draw it carefully, this graph, which again has the same inverse shape, but it is vertically stretched by a factor of three when dealing with the outputs. The inputs and outputs uh, will be sh uh, rigidly translated, where the inputs will go right three and the outputs will go up one. And that's the final answer. Maybe a bad way, maybe a good way to do this also, if you want, is to take a look at this H comma K, which on most of the other graphs was always thought of as a vertex. This graph doesn't have a vertex because it has the asymptotes, but if you went to 3 comma 1 and put a dot to start, you might be able to sit there and say, that is where my asymptotes will go, and maybe drawing them earlier would be better. I'll try and do that on the next example even, okay? So, the next example, we're going to have to make an ABHK chart. Uh, again, this is an example where A is in the numerator. We have Y equals negative 2 over the quantity X plus 3 minus 2. Um, you would also maybe see this written without the parentheses. They don't, they're kind of irrelevant. So, we've got A is negative 2. B is my multiplier of the uh, input, which here is 1, so who cares? H is the additive parameter with regard to the input. It's the inverse of what you see. So I see plus 3. It's really going to be minus 3. And then uh, my K value is, in fact, negative 2. Okay? So I'm going to start with my parent points, which are, in fact, you have to have them memorized, too. 1, 1, 2, a half, half, 2 and then flipped over into the third quadrant, giving you negative 2, negative half, negative 1, negative 1, negative half, negative 2. Now, like I said in the last example, if you notice here that you've got these asymptotes here of the x-axis and the y-axis, and the original vertex, if you think about it there, if you think of this as a vertex, but it's not really on the graph, so that's not a great name for it, would be 0, 0, and now it's going to move to negative 3, negative 2, so that's going to be over here. So I guess I could kind of just resketch the asymptotes here and expect to get that type of effect, okay, that it'll fit around there when I'm done. All right, so let's multiply all of my outputs by negative 2. This is going to create a reflection because I'm multiplying by a negative. So this negative half here of the output when multiplied by negative 2 is going to become 1. Use a box because it's not the final answer. This output of negative 1 when I multiply it by negative 2 is going to become... 2, and then we see this output of negative 2 when I multiply it by negative 2 will become 4, 
Okay? Now, it doesn't look like it's going to hit these uh, new asymptotes, but it will because you're going to get a shift. So keep going. This output of 2 when multiplied by negative 2 becomes negative 4. This output of 1 when multiplied by negative 2 becomes negative 2. And then this output of one when multiplied, excuse me, one half when multiplied by negative two becomes negative one. Now the last piece I need to do here is my shift, which is going to go, excuse me, three to the left and two down, and I'll do that for every one of these graphs, every one of these uh, graphed blue boxes to continue the transformation. So what are we going to get here? We're going to take um, this first point right here, okay, and go three to my left and two down. One, two, three, one, two, okay, which when we go off the grid, one to the left is negative five, and then we're down negative one. I'll label it just for accuracy. One, two, three, then down two again is going to take me this point, and then this guy of going one, two, three, being careful to be on the half and come down two makes me hug this asymptote effect very nicely. And now I'm going to do this for the other points. Again, on the half here, one, two, three. And then I'm going to go down two to here, which is going to be negative two and a half comma, negative 6, just to label it to give you an idea, I don't know that it's off the graph, but where it is, and then I'm going to take this point, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, down 2, okay, and get a point there, and then this last point will go 1, 2, 3, down 2, and I will get a point there, and if you notice, this graph does hug these asymptotes, very well, and drawing it thusly is my finished product. So again, it all comes down to the fact that this original graph of the inverse was um, affected by having its outputs multiplied by negative 2, which gave a vertical stretch and a flip over the x-axis. And then the inputs were shifted left three while the outputs were shifted down two. And again, just to reiterate the way I started here, I took a look at my H comma K value and moved it from zero, zero, where the original sort of centralized portion of this graph was. And then I went three to my left and two down and made a re-centralized idea here and in fact just drew the asymptote lines there. So it's a long video, but I know this was something that kids uh, struggle with in class a little bit. Um, when you're dealing with uh, these um, inverse functions, again, not the inverse of undo a function, but the inverse of create the inverse number uh, of whatever it is you plug in, the multiplicative inverse, that is, uh, they're a little tricky, especially because you get the break in the function because there's values excluded from the domain and the function's in two pieces. Uh, if we see here again, this function cannot have negative 3 plugged into it for x. So if I go to x is negative 3, which is here, you notice that there is no graph that will hit that. So a little more complex. Uh, takes a couple of skills you had before, extends them into some new things. But up, ba ba boop. So I think that is a good use of your 25 minutes to uh, maybe take a look at this again, okay, uh, and good luck.